In this two-part video, we're going to see how we can simulate subsurface scattering in fusion. Subsurface scattering is the simulation of light through translucent materials such as this candle wax or skin, where light is transmitted through the object. In this part, we'll show you how to create the five components of the shader. In the second part, we'll show you how they're combined. In this case, we're going to start with a torus, and we're going to increase the subdivision for both the level and the height. Then we're going to add a 3D spotlight. And this will be the basic primitive that we're going to use to evaluate our shader. The directional light's important because we want to be able to mimic uh, the appearance of the light as it moves through the material. Now we'll begin by modeling the diffuse component. So to begin with, we add a material uh, tool, a blin, for the lighting. Then we set the specular intensity to zero. We add a background tool, and we'll use this as the sort of global color for our diffuse. So we'll set that to just a standard, um, let's say, a yellowish gold. Excellent. So, of course, no specular component at all, but we do want some variations. We'll use a fast noise as a height map, so we increase the detail, the scale, make it discontinuous and inverted. Then we connect that into a bump map texture and connect that to the blends bump map texture input. Then a little bit of adjustment of the height scale to fit our needs. Okay, so that gives us the diffuse component. Now we're ready to address the backlight component. In other words, uh, all of the parts of the geometry that are not lit directly, but are lit internally. So we begin with the blend tool and we use the same diffuse texture from the background. We set the specular intensity to zero, but we need to reverse the normals. And we're going to do that by adding a background tool and setting the red, green, and blue to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1. When we use this as a bump map, Initially, there will be no change whatsoever. However, if we go back to the original background and set the blue from 1 to 0, we invert the normals because the blue represents the z vector on the xyz normal. Now, we're going to use the fast noise as a bump map for this side as well. So we take a branch out of that, we use the create bump tool and set a height scale to match. But we need to inverse the vectors on this one as well. So uh, before we merge it as an overlay, we're going to insert a color space and we'll just do a negative so that where it was white, it's now black in the fast noise. Perfect. And so now you can see we've got our backlight component. The light wrap component is going to give us a map we can use to control the blending between the diffuse and the backlit components. We begin by copying one of the blend tools and pasting it so we have a specular intensity blend of zero. We use the same uh, diffuse map and the same uh, height map, but this time we're going to add a channel boolean. And input A of the channel boolean is going to be the original background. Input B is going to be our new blend. We're going to subtract B from A on the red, green, and blue channels. Now we can use the diffuse color of our new blend tool in order to control the intensity uh, of the uh, blend between the diffuse and the backlit components. Now for the specular component, this time instead of using a blend tool, we're going to use the Fong lighting model instead. So we grab that out of the material section of the 3D tools. We connect it to the sample, uh, sample geometry. We take the diffuse to black. We set the color of the specular to a lighter shade of that same gold and yellow. We adjust the specular exponent to give us a nice soft specular shadow, and we use the same normals that we were using for our bump map previously from that fast noise. Now all we need to do is address the reflection component of our shader. Wax isn't very reflective, but we want a general purpose subsurface scatter shader, so we add a blend shader to the composition. We take the diffuse down to zero and the specular intensity, so we want nothing from diffuse or specular. We're going to directly lead this into a reflection material. And for the reflection material, of course, we need a reflection image. So we're going to load one from disk, add that to the reflection background, and then we can adjust the glancing and face-on strength, as you see here. Now, we want this to be treated as a spherical environment map, so we put a sphere map in here so that we're not just UV mapping it onto our reflection surface. 
and we'll use a blur to control the amount of shininess. Finally, a bump map. So in summary, we created a five component shader containing a diffuse material, containing a backlight for the diffuse material, containing a falloff map, a specular, and a reflection. And in part two of this video, we're going to show you how we combine those together to create the image you see here, uh, subsurface scattering in a wax candle.